Isn't that an awesome sunset? <laughs> Welcome to art class with Brent. We're gonna draw some um, network fundamental type of stuff. You're here with the uh, epic sunset behind me. Uh, can't pay for that. That's, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> and we got booze and a nice cigar. So this should be awesome. Anyway, I get a lot of questions about um, basic networking stuff, uh, basic infrastructure. So this could be like infrastructure 101. Think of it that way. So for those of you that, that are aware that you have to have something to plug into the radio, uh, first of all, bravo. Uh, first step is complete. <laughs> now, what to do with it when you plug it into that radio? So we have your, say, radio one right there right your hang on let's let's flip this bad boy around like this oh yeah so much easier to draw so you have your fiber connection right fiber and that yeah my my writing real my handwriting is legitimately that bad uh it's slightly exaggerated by the fact that i'm drawing on screen but it's, it's pretty awful. But you have your fiber into your radio one, right? Now, from there, you have to think of the radios as really big, uh, long, invisible ethernet cables. It's basically all they are. From one radio to another is just a really long, invisible ethernet. That's it. So then you're gonna go over to radio two, and then from there into your uh, router or whatever, your your access point, your what switch, what that's gonna be like your most basic setup. I don't think anyone's gonna be doing that with um, this type of scenario, this type, you know, the whole wisp thing. Usually you're gonna have a relay, so, for that, you're gonna have your fiber into radio one, just like before. That's gonna go over to radio two. And from there, it's gonna go into a switch. Now, the switch doesn't really matter. You can either do a PoE switch if you want the switch to run the radios, or if you want to save some coin, you can just use the power injectors that come with the radios. It, it doesn't make any difference. This is a power injector from a uh, light beam, from one of my light beams. I'm gonna turn my light down, jeez. Freaking light was making this thing look like just a white blob. But yeah, this is the uh, power injector for a light beam. You get power in here, and on the other side, you have PoE, which goes to the radio, and then you have your LAN port, which goes to your switch or whatever. All radios come with these things. Uh, the AF24HDs that I used to have did, they were a little bigger, but they did. The AF5X HDs that I use now, they did too. Nano beams did, that was one out of a light beam. They all come with these things. So if you don't wanna use a PoE switch, you don't have to. It just makes everything a bit more clean and neat and tidy and a little better for uh, cosmetics sake. <laughs> A little bit more simple. Then from there, you're gonna go into your radio three. Now radio three can either be a sector antenna, like in my case, my third radio is a air fiber prism, whatever the hell it's called. It's a prism, it's a sector antenna, or a sector radio rather. That's the one that goes out to all the subscribers, all the CPEs. CPE is customer placed equipment. That's the antenna or the radio on the, you know, the subscriber's house or business or whatever, wherever you're shooting to. So radio three, in this one, we're gonna go to, you'll see PTMP around, that's point to multi-point. This is point to point. Point to multi-point is the sector. So we're gonna have all our little houses with my, Awesome artwork. 
I know that shit's gonna be framed in a freaking museum someday. I barely write my damn name. There we go. Butamus. Now, if you need to complicate things, and you know, sometimes complications just, it, it's one of those things, you gotta do what you gotta do. This part right here can be multiplied. You can have the same exact thing more than once. You can have more than one relay. From one thing, this is your backhaul. Back haul. You can have more than one radio in your backhaul. That's fine, it works fine. You would have, as I drop my damn shit. For that, you would have a radio into a switch. If I can write, there we go. Into another radio, just like that case. But then it would go over to another radio into another switch. And on and on it goes forever. I mean, you can do it kind of as far as you need to, if you need to go around mountains or whatever, that's why the relay goes to where it goes in my case. I would have it on top of my house, but there's a mountain in the way. So I have to hit the relay house and then go this way. It's just how it goes. Complication is required sometimes. Now, what I'm not sure of is I think there are radios that you can plug directly into each other without needing a switch. And that would be kind of awesome. Um, you wouldn't need a switch and all the power for it and everything else. That'd be kind of nice, but I'm not real sure. It's probably out there somewhere. I'll do some, uh, some research and if I see one, I'll put it in the description or in the comment section or something like that. So yeah, that's how the network works. That's, that's like the, the back end of the network. You have to have something to plug into the radio <laughs> and you have to have your backhaul, even if it's only a short little link. And then you have to have your receiver radio. Then it can go wherever, be it another radio or well, it's going to go to another radio, no matter what another backhaul type radio like that. Or if it goes to a, point to multi-point radio, like for a sector antenna, which is how mine is set up. Now you can actually see my setup in the um, episode four of this series. If you go there all the way in the beginning, that's my old setup before I was actually giving internet to other people. That was the, um, I had four nano beams and you can see in the beginning of the video is the one nano beam where my Cox account was, quote unquote. They thought I was my buddy's roommate, but they didn't need to know any different. And it beamed from there to the relay house where it went in one antenna, down in a switch, out the switch, out another antenna to my house. So that's what, uh, let's see. That's what this whole thing is right here. M minus all that. <laughs> Cause there were no CPEs or anything. There was no sector antenna. There was none of that at the time. But yeah, that, that's how it works. It's really, really simple. If you want to start introducing solar or get like off the grid, or like if you can't, if you have your, your spot where you want to put a relay, but you don't have any power, for instance, you want to, you need to go solar, you need to go off the grid, you know, things get a little bit more complicated again. Uh, that's probably a topic for another video because that's a pretty big ordeal. There's literally a thousand different ways to do this. It all depends on where you're at and what you need to get done. You gotta look at your scenario and kind of plan accordingly. My scenario and my hardware and my network setup and everything else probably won't work for everybody else. Some people will probably need simpler or more complex systems or whatever. They're not even getting into the hardware selection because the radios and the um, antennas and the switches and everything. It's, it's almost endless. And my cigar went out and I'm pissed. I forgot about it, damn it. But that's the basics. That's how it works. It goes from one radio to another radio. Think of it as a long ethernet cable. And from there it goes into a switch, out into another radio where it can be a point to multi-point kind of thing, like a sector antenna, like I do here, or another backbone type antenna, another point to point link. That's it. That's how simple it is. So. 
Thank you for hanging out with, uh, with me for art time with Brent, with my amazing drawing skills. <laughs> in the meantime, have a good one and join the Discord. Link in the description. Later. <laughs>